Hey guys, so I am officially eight, almost nine weeks postpartum, and I realized that I have not done a postpartum update kind of in a while, and I just wanted to update you guys on me. Um, the main reason why I haven't done an update is because one, I think once you have a baby, no one is really interested um, in like how you're doing anymore. <laughs> so I figured it would be boring and you guys wouldn't watch it, but why not? Um, and I haven't really been getting as many views as I used to any anyways when I was pregnant, so I figure I can just like do whatever I want. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm nine weeks, almost nine weeks postpartum. On Thursday it will be nine weeks and it's Monday. Um, it's, it's been weird because I have both ends of the spectrum where one, I've been feeling amazing and incredibly great about myself and my new life. And then the other end where I just feel really bad about my new body. I feel really horrible about the way that I look, the new way that I look. And I feel bad about not sleeping. I feel guilty. I'm not doing good enough, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, I either feel really great or I feel really horrible. And it kind of seems like there's no in between. And every day is different. Some days I'm really good. Some days I'm really bad. Some days I'm up and down. And it's just kind of a lot. Um, it's been, I don't know, like adjusting to this new life as a mom and having having little bits of freedom here and there but not having full freedom let me let me go deeper into that so as a mom the freedom and the free time you get you actually do get a lot of free time and freedom throughout the day and like day to day and also when you want to do like like big things but it's only small bits of freedom so it's not like before where you just have 24 hours of freedom it's more like two hours of working with the screaming baby or hungry baby or just baby who wants attention and then like 30 minutes of freedom and then an hour of screaming baby 45 minutes of freedom another hour of screaming baby 20 minutes of freedom so it's like broken up um and on the days you want to go like do something the only thing that I've the only time I've ever gotten away from her was uh like really gotten away from her was me and Jaime on my birthday day and that was like I want to say it's three or four hours and it was it was awesome well, it wasn't, I want to say it was awesome to get away from her, but it was really good to get some time alone with Jaime and actually go on a date. And it was kind of weird to, like, be together and not have a baby either in my belly or here to talk about. So it was weird. But anyways, I'm going off on a tangent. Um, So we got, like, I think it was three hours. We were planning on staying out for longer, but we were so exhausted. We were so tired like when we were here with the baby we had energy getting ready and everything so I did not think we'd be so tired but as soon as we ate it hit that we were like tired so we couldn't even enjoy it and I feel like a lot of the free time I get at, at home by myself is like that anyways so when I get the little chunks of freedom basically I have a few choices to make well I have one choice to make with a few different options I choose I can either choose to sleep to eat, to take a shower, slash brush my teeth, slash brush my hair, slash get changed, do my makeup, play video games, or watch videos, or that's pretty much it. So, I mean, most of the time I end up choosing video games or, or eating. I do not choose naps anymore, um, and I'll get into that more later. But I choose, I usually choose, honestly, video games. Even though I need to eat, I need to take a shower, I need this, I need that. And the reason why I choose that over anything else is because I feel like I'm going to lose my mind the rest of the day if I don't. Because um, for a couple hours, my focus is on her when she's awake and she's grouchy. It's on her making her happy, making sure she's comfortable. So I feel like I get so, like, balled up that I need that little bit of time to just relax because I feel like that's more of a necessity than eating sometimes and that sounds crazy but I'm sure other moms can understand and um 
it just has been hard kind of lately getting used to that kind of life and that kind of mindset rather than just like doing what I want all the time but I mean it doesn't have to be said that I'm happy doing it and I'm thankful um for what it means for me choosing that because that means I get to have my daughter in my life and she's happy so that does not need to be said I'm sure you guys that's implied but anyway so yeah and yeah and at first after I gave birth to her for a while I was feeling like amazing about myself and my new body but for the past I want to say week I want to say like two weeks or so um I've been feeling really bad about myself and I feel bad for that because I shouldn't but I do like I look back at old pictures of myself and I used to hate how skinny I was I hated my body hated how I looked but now looking back on old pictures of myself and my body like now I just like I'm so embarrassed like I hate changing I hate wearing tight clothes I hate people seeing like my belly now because like in public like I would like walk around and I just felt like I had this kind of power because I felt like I looked so good and I was so confident and now I just feel like I want to hide like whenever I'm out in public I just want to wear a big old hoodie with a hood on and hide and it feels crappy and I wish I didn't feel that way but I do um a lot of the times I do not not all the time but a lot of the times I do and it makes me really sad that I can't wear my clothes anymore really most of my clothes because I'm too big and the main problem is that my hips are wider now. Before I was like this, no hips. Now I'm kind of like that. Like I have bigger hips. So none of my, my, I had to get rid of all my jeans. I got a new pair of jeans and a lot of my like skirts and stuff fit kind of weird. And my shirts, obviously I have kind of a belly now. So a lot of my shirts are tight and small from before the pregnancy. So I can't even wear most of them. So I have to officially go through them and get rid of the ones I can't fit into, but I've been avoiding it because it's really hard to face that. As anyone who has had drastic body change in their life knows, you don't even have to be a mom, you just have to have a drastic body change to understand. Um, so it sucks, and breastfeeding has been really frustrating. She's been breastfeeding great. Too good. All she wants to do is be attached and she's gaining weight, she's getting milk, I'm, I, my supply is good. It's not that she's not eating enough, it's just she needs the comfort, I guess. It's either she needs the comfort, the comfort, or I don't even know. I'm pretty sure it's just the comfort because she'll be crying and crying. And as soon as she latches, she gets quiet and she's like, <sighs> like she takes a deep breath. And I think that that's it. And even at night, the only way that she'll sleep is on my arm and connected to the boob. Which, why I said I wouldn't take naps earlier is because she sleeps through the night now. Um, she eats in her sleep and she nurses in her sleep. But she does sleep throughout the whole night. So, um, so I get, like, like, I get broken up sleep because she won't wake up crying. But she'll, like, move or she'll be looking for the nipple in her sleep and it'll wake me up. So then I'll put the boob in her mouth and then I'm awake, like while she's nursing and then I go back to sleep. So I get about two hours of sleep at a time and she's asleep for like six hours. So, um, so like I'll be, I'll be asleep for two hours. I'll be awake for like half an hour, 45 minutes, and then I'll go back to sleep and then I'll wake up again. And then I'll pretty much be awake for like an hour or two until she really wakes up. And then a high mate takes her usually and I get a couple hours of sleep and and I mean she needs to eat even in the morning so every couple of hours he's bringing her in but besides that I do get a couple hours of sleep without someone on my arm so that's why I don't take naps because um yeah because that and also because if I take naps I don't know how long she's gonna be asleep for and so I might only get a 20 hour nap and wake up exhausted and not able to take care of her so I don't take naps um I forget where I was going with this. Breastfeeding. Breastfeeding has been really extremely difficult. I had to take like a day and a half break where basically she ate mostly formula because I needed a break. I just needed a break and it was stressing me out. And my supply actually took a dip for a couple of days, I think because I was stressed. So 
I, when I stopped and I relaxed, my supply went back up. So I'm pretty sure I was just stressed. Um, yeah. So, I, new topic. <laughs> I was on my period for 12 days. 12 days. And it was really crappy. But it ended a couple days ago. or No, yesterday. So that's good. And I'm still taking birth control. Um... I'm actually on the first day, well, on this technically the second day of my placebo week, so I probably will start bleeding again, which sucks. But um, I already have my new birth control um, all lined up right here. So, yeah. So I'm ready for next month, and birth control's been going pretty good. It's the mini pill. The mini pill, I cannot talk. It's the mini pill. So it's half of the hormones, so it does not affect me as bad as regular birth control does, which affects me really, really badly. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of what's been going on. Um, I just have been really stressed because I don't do a lot of the housework, I don't do a lot of the cooking. Um, because I'm always taking care of her in the times I do have a break. I just don't feel like cleaning because I'm so stressed out and so worn out from taking care of her. So that's been causing some tension in my relationship because um, Jaime has been very, very patient with me and understanding and he knows I'm here with her all day. So he's very patient with me not doing as much. But he has like expressed to me that obviously he's working all the time and he can't be doing all the house cleaning and he needs help. And... That just makes me feel like a crappy girlfriend and a crappy mom. And um, so that's been really stressing me out. Um, <sighs> yeah, I just can't wait until she starts to get older and she's less dependent on me, which that sounds selfish, but I don't mean like, I know she'll always need me and I know she's going to be baby for a long time and she's going to need me a lot. But I mean, like, when she starts to really play with her toys and things like that so I can actually get some cleaning done. That's what I mean. Um, speaking of which, uh, she has been loving her toys so much. I'm going to include the baby update in here just because might as well. So she's eight weeks old, eight and a half weeks now. And, um, she's been loving her toys. Like, she loves them. She stares at them. She laughs at them. She talks to them. And in her car seat, like, I put her toys on her car seat now. She, like, she won't even scream in the car seat because she'll have her toys. Like, she does, she can't play with them yet. She doesn't have the motor skills to, like, reach out and hit them and stuff. But she loves looking at them. Like, they make her so happy. So, that's a pretty exciting update. And she's been smiling a lot, talking a lot been on the boob a lot she's in the hundredth percentile for her height according to her doctor which I thought that was impossible to be in the hundredth percentile but apparently she is um she's 24 inches tall at eight weeks old so she's incredibly long like incredibly long like every time I hold her I'm like oh my gosh like every time I'm breastfeeding her she hangs off of me and I'm like this is too early but yeah, so she's incredibly tall and she weighs 11 and at 11 pounds, 7 ounces. But that could be off because um, I didn't go to her normal doctor. So on the 20th, we have her two-month uh, appointment. So um, that's not a for sure weight, but I will let you guys know. Um, so yeah, so she's regular about average in height and weight, but in length. She in weight, weight. She's average in weight, but in height, she's way above average, which is not a surprise because I'm tall, my dad's tall. So, anyways, um, I'm going to give you guys the body update, and then I'm going to get out of here and check on my baby because she's asleep in her swing in the living room, and I don't like leaving her alone. So this is uh almost nine weeks postpartum. I'm gonna untuck my shirt. I don't know why I have it tucked in. So this is my body. As you guys can see, I still have my pooch, which probably will never go away because I have that loose skin from my big old nine pound baby. Uh, I'm trying to make this shirt tight. So this is from the side and the front. And I'm gonna show you guys my belly. 
I still have my line, and you guys can't really see, but I have my stretch marks still. Um, these, by the way, are not my stretch marks. Well, some of them are. But a lot of this, like this, is the line for my shirt, or for my pants. So yeah, this is my belly. I just have a little mommy pooch, and I'm trying to be okay with it. So yeah. Thank you guys, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.